Direct from Montreal, Canada, this is Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon. Welcome to this episode of Rock Talk with Mitch LaFon on uh, this uh, Mitch uh, Marathon Month, uh, the holiday edition. So about two weeks. Uh, we've got singer Liv Warfield. She has new music coming out in uh, 2020. Had a couple of uh, singles in 2019. She has, of course, spent time with Prince. Oui, le seul unique, the one and only. And, of course, Nancy Wilson in a band called Roadcase Royale. So we talk about that and a lot more. It is, of course, a Christmas Day around the world. So let me just take a, a few moments to talk about some of my uh, favorite Christmas albums. Uh, we'll start off with the newest one from uh, Brian Adams. He has a new album out called The Christmas EP. It is a 2019 release, and it sounds Fantastic. So uh, do check out the uh, Christmas EP from Brian Adams. Aerosmith, a longtime guitarist, Joe Perry, a few years back, I believe it was like 2014 or so, released the uh, Joe Perry's Merry Christmas. Uh, if you can find that, have a, have a listen. Uh, one that I had, uh, well, I had playing on repeat for a bit was uh, the uh, Twisted Sister, A Twisted Christmas. That came out, oh my lord probably a good 15 years ago and it was the band essentially reimagining their classic hits but as christmas songs so if you want to hear sort of we're not going to take it with christmas lyrics uh twisted sisters a, a twisted christmas is for you now that album led to this next album uh, from helix called a heavy mental christmas i was at lunch with a singer Brian Vollmer, and I was telling him about this Christmas album that that Twisted Sister was doing, and he was like, "Come again? Yeah, a, a what album?" I said, "Twisted Sister's doing a Christmas album," and he's like, "Huh?" And uh, it was the genesis of of an idea for him and for him, and he decided, you know what, I'm gonna make a Helix one. And he did, and it was very successful, in fact. Uh, he, I remember he got a deal with Walmart Canada to have it in all the Walmarts at Christmas time back. This is probably, I don't know, 2005, 2006, maybe. I don't know, the, the dates uh, escape me. But a very successful, and it still sells uh, at Walmarts in Canada. So uh, Helix, a heavy mental Christmas. Uh, a couple years back, I believe 2017, Thunder. The Mighty Thunder from the UK, which uh, a lot of listeners in North America have no idea who I'm talking about, but absolutely my favorite, favorite band. Got a uh, 530 song playlist in my phone of all Thunder. Uh, anyway, they had a, an EP called the uh, Christmas Day EP, which came out in uh, 2017, 2017, I should say. So if you haven't heard it, check out The Mighty Thunder, because I will keep uh, talking about it regardless of what people will say and then and then and then and then uh how's that for a transition i will finish with my absolute favorite christmas album of all time it is billy idol's happy holidays it was released with uh, two separate covers one with him at a piano and and some christmas presents and then there was another one that had more of a golden or a cover if you want um from what i understand and I haven't spoken to Billy about this, but from what I understand, he's 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 like, uh oh, why why did I do that? Now, um, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But if you have a chance, pick up Billy Idol's Happy Holidays. It has been out of print for for many years now. In fact, when it was in print, I think it was hard to get. I think he had to get it through like his website or something. Anyway, I have a copy and I love it. Uh, you can also head over to my favorite site for rare imports, Disc Cog. Uh, dot com so d i s c o g s discogs uh, dot com uh, they have all the uh, imports i have no uh, no connection to that site i just i use it i've been using it for god 15 years or so and uh, whenever you need a hard to find import you go on there it's a marketplace for uh, vinyl and cd and cassette and whatever else and you can find it uh, so if you're looking for the billy idol happy holidays uh, do check that out and while we're checking stuff out here is my Christmas uh, edition uh, episode with Liv Warfield. She has been, like I said, in a band with Nancy Wilson, also sang with Prince, and, uh, well, here we are. 
Happy Christmas, Happy New Year, Happy Everything, and here's Liv. We are speaking with the singer Liv Warfield, a new single is a look at me available now as is a mantra or mantra depending on how you want to say it uh, bonjour right. as we say live from uh, as we say in montreal bonjour how are you oh bless i'm good how are you good good so good. you have had a an exciting career from from the stuff with prince to nancy wilson mm. but now mm. you're 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 doing this stuff on your own you you've also of course done uh, unex- the unexpected and embrace me but uh Talk mm-hmm. to me about putting out two singles, because it's very different than getting together and coming up with 10 songs and putting out a whole album. Talk to me about putting out uh, Mantra and then, uh, or, um, and look at me. Well, Mantra was one of the songs that I feel like I needed to complete. I actually, I think 2015 was kind of like when I needed to take a break. Um, all things happening, you know, you know, Prince's passing and... Um, you know, Nancy Wilson, which is amazing from heart coming into my life. It just, it was a lot of transitions going on in my life. And I was just really trying to figure out what I wanted to do if I even wanted to sing anymore. So, um, I had had the song written, um, but now here we are, it's 2019 and I just finished it this year. So it's just really talks about, you know, the kind of up and downs and the kind of things that we go through and how it's just kind of like, you know, you're going to have wins, you're going to have losses, but at the end of the day, you just have to kind of go with your gut and follow and follow through. Like, just don't give up on anything, you know. And I and I know I've, I can really attest to that, <laughs> um, because a lot of the circumstances in my life, I'm surprised I was able to be able to sing with these amazing artists. And even when I was like, Nah, I'm finished. Something comes along, and I'm swooped up and I'm singing and I'm writing songs with Nancy Wilson of Heart and recording with Prince and just all these amazing things. So Mantra was definitely. Um, the catalyst, I guess I can call it like my, my rock opus. Um, it's like a song I really wanted to do guitar heavy with like 45 piece orchestra. It's insane. So um, I, I I needed to finish it for myself. And then I also wanted to put it out to the world, you know, so people could feel it, you know. Uh, talk to me about sort of your path to becoming a singer, because you, you weren't, a, mm-hmm. you didn't sort of grow up thinking I'm going to be a singer. And it sort of came to you when was that moment where you were you were just sort of singing, whether in front of the bathroom mirror or somebody, and somebody said, hey, wait a minute, you've got a voice. Uh, talk, talk to me about discovering your voice. Oh, man. Um, I guess I, the thing about me is I, like, I knew when I was eight, but I couldn't show anybody until I was 20 years old, 2021, 20, until I moved away from home. So it was just, I guess it's just all in, in whatever timing the universe worked for me. You know, I just kind of... A couple of friends of mine who are uh, collegiate athletes of mine were like, girl, have you heard of this thing called karaoke? And I was like, what? <laughs> um, I lived a very sheltered life growing up. And then when I caught on to that, I was like, oh, my God. And it's just little steps like that. And then, you know, Portland, Oregon really, really raised me musically. I say that because they embraced me to step out to grab the mic my first time in Portland. I started my first band. I had a lot of amazing artists that really, really mentored me into just kind of honing, you know, what I have. And I just kind of took it and ran with it. Um, and I, I'm, I'm super grateful for that because I didn't even know I was going to step out like that. I'm like, okay, all right, girl, you got this. And uh, here I am. I'm still, I'm still doing it. So <laughs> I guess I'm okay. Now, now these two singles are, of course, going to lead to an album in 2020. Uh, talk to me a little mm-hmm. bit about some of the the excitement and also some of the challenges, because, you know, when you're with Nancy Wilson, a lot of folks will mm-hmm. look at Nancy and say, oh, well, she's the main attraction and whatever else is going on around is. is and same with Prince. But now you're on your own. It's, it's your face. T- talk to me about the challenges of being on your own, but also the excitement of being on your own. Um. The challenge is, is is definitely because you know I am fully independent artist, so I guess um, the financial challenges of being able to have the funding, the marketing, and be able to put your music out the way you want it to be, like airtime, radio play, all those things matter. You know, um, that's probably been the most challenging part for me, um, just to kind of get my voice out there. But it's also no excuse because you have all these social media platforms that can allow you to push it however you feel like you want. You know. Um, the beauty of it is that I'm able to just do whatever the hell I feel like doing. <laughs> I could do the music the way I want. I own my music. I, I have full control over, wh- you know, what I want to give out and put out. 
um, to the world, which I'm excited about, which I'm, I don't feel confined. Like if I want to move this way, if I want to do a rock album, I can do a rock album. If I want to do an R&B album, I can do that. I don't have people kind of directing me and telling me which way to go. So I feel like those are the things that I really, I really love about it, about being an independent artist for sure. Yeah. So yeah. And also not having to deal with A&R guys, right? Yeah, I mean, this, <laughs> Respect, it's good and bad to that, you know what I mean? <laughs> like, the A&R is good, you know what I mean? I, 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 it's it's beneficial, but I also at the same time, they got to also understand you as an artist, you know? I don't need anybody to kind of develop me or, or, or you know, kind of tell me what my sound is. I mean, things are, I feel like now are very advanced. Um, the, even the younger generation now is like, phew, it's mind-blowing how, you know, the access that they have on YouTube and all of that, you know, and, and how well they are as musicians, how seasoned they are. It's kind of like that stuff isn't really needed, but the experience is needed. Nothing outweighs experience. I don't care. Like nothing outweighs it. So, so yeah. Uh, just real quick, uh, Road Case Royale, which is what you do with yeah. Nancy. Uh, yeah. As of a, or, or up until at least 2018, and we were on the road, uh, even up here in Canada and New Brunswick and other places. Mm. Uh Talk to me about that band. Is that something that you will continue to do? Is that something that's just sort of, well, when there's time in the schedule? You know, what what is the commitment to that? Or is it been there, done that? Now it's really all about live moving forward. No, I, I absolutely think that um, when time permits and we're all able to go back and do it again, I think that we, we, we would, you know. Um, it's just you know, there's still pages that need to be written in that book in Road Case Royale because I thought it was awesome. I thought it was fun. It was really unique. Um, so it's, you know, it's up to Boss Lady <laughs> what she wants to do. And I'm sure with everybody else and their schedules and and to see, you know, when we can come back together and do it. I, I thought it was amazing. Um, so it's, you know, it's up in the air, I guess. But I had shit tons of fun doing it. <laughs> you can't, yeah, you, you can say that. And, uh, it was, and it, okay, okay. I'll tell you what, listen, I, I am looking at a YouTube video right now of you uh -huh. and Roe Case Royale doing crazy on you in, um, at the mm. casino in New Brunswick. And one comment here at the bottom, this guy wrote, holy sh, that woman is powerful in, in terms of mm. you and your scene. So there you go, right? You, you got to love Bless. that kind of <laughs> that kind of stuff. Um, real quick, uh, you, you can't do an interview without talking about Prince. It's going to be this question that you will always be asked about, right? So we'll, we'll, mm -hmm. let's just go there for a second. Um, but I'm going to go with your album first, uh, The Unexpected. Mm -hmm. uh, two songs uh, include Prince, that one, The Unexpected, that he wrote, and, mm -hmm. of course, your show that you wrote with him. Talk to me about, about that. Uh, first of all, the song that he wrote, is that something that he just had and said, hey, I think you would sound good on it? Or is it, hey, hey, I am going to write you a song. You work. How does that sort of come about? And and then talk to me also about singing a Prince song because it's actually kind of cool. Um, the songs. Well, when I was doing the Unexpected album, he had asked me. You know, he just was like, "What kind of vibe are you going for? Like, you know, like what's your story?" And at the time, like, you know, I'm a super huge fan of Cleopatra Jones and um, the movies, and I thought that this album I wanted it to feel like if, if it was my movie, what would the soundtrack be to that? So, you know, he had, I think this was when the NPG horns was around and in the studio, he was coming up with these amazing like horn arrangements, and all these parts. And he said, well, if you want to write to it. So I wrote what I wanted to it. And then, um, then he came and I sang what I wanted to sing on it at the studio. And he's like, well, check it out. I'll be back. I'll be back in an hour. And then he just kind of, you know, flipped some words and flipped some things. And I kept my chorus and just, and he, I think he did sing a demo of it. And then I sang my part and it was just crazy. Cause it was just, I mean, how his mind works, how fast, um, it, just how passionate he is about it and how understanding he, he just the understanding about it. Like he understood my energy and where I was coming from. And also with the unexpected, he said, uh, this is funny. Cause um, he was like, what are you going to call your album? I said, I'm going to call it the unexpected. And he's like, Hmm, do you have anything for that yet? And I was like, no. <laughs> and uh, he was like, okay, hold on. And then literally I kid you not like 48 hours, not even at 48 hours. He called me on the phone. Doesn't say much. And was like, live. And then just puts the phone by the speakers. And then you hear, 
and playing the ver- which is Third Eye Girl's version on their album is called Wow. So I listen to it and I go, oh my God, I'm losing my mind. Like, hell no, I'm not going to be able to play this. A, I'm not going to be able to duplicate this. Are you crazy? And then he's looking at me like, yeah, you're we actually, you're right. <laughs> you won't be able to duplicate this. And I'm like, okay. So he goes, I'll tell you what. He's like, you do your version. So what I did was is I came back with my version, which is called The Unexpected on my album. And on Third Eye Girl's album, it's called Wow. So it's really, really cool. Like, it's kind of like a marriage of, of two versions, which I thought was really, really sick. Like, he loved it. He loved my version. And then, you know, I definitely cannot do it the way he does it, does it? Yeah. <laughs> which is epic. But, um, yeah, it was really, really dope. Super dope. It, yeah. it's, it's got to be. Now, from what I understand, you also recorded a couple of tracks, at least at, at Paisley Park. You know, that that for somebody like me, that's a, this mythical place that I will never mm. see. Right. You hear about it. Right. It's, it's, mm. it's like it's like, you know, it's like heaven. You hear about it. Right. But you never know until you get there. Um, what was that like in terms of, of a recording studio in, the current, in terms of an experience? Is it just this sort of wild and crazy place or is it just all business. What's it like to be in that studio? First off, I have to say you can go to Paisley still. You can go visit Paisley in the museum if you would love to. Paisley okay. is always open and welcome. But I'm in Canada. Um, but but you could still go if you want to go. I guess. All right. All right. I'll have to make an effort. <laughs> but um, I, I feel like this place was um, and still is. It's just it was my safe haven, right? For any musician and any anybody who stepped in those doors knew that the outside world did not even matter. Um, the energy in that place is insane. It's nothing but music, all music 24-7. It's on the walls. It's on the floor. It's everywhere. And um, we could not help but to take that in and absorb that. Like Paisley was, is, is special, is, was, is, is special. For me, when he was alive and he was there, it was extreme like it was extreme in a way that it was like I'm on another planet. Um, when you walk in those doors, you knew when you walk in those doors, it was just an over overwhelming feeling of, man, are we about to create today? I miss that. Like I miss it. Like I feel like, you know, any studio go, you go into or any place you, you go into musically, of course it's it's lovely, but Paisley was just a place that was just different. Um. It's for any odd head that are normal heads <laughs> that could go there and feel like it's, I don't know, your family, you know, in every sense of the word. So, I mean, that's the best way that I can describe it. I mean, from going there to Paisley Park, I call it Paisley Park University. You go there and the, and also experiences of doing after shows at like three or four in the morning, um, when I tell you music was 24 seven, it was 24 seven, you know, it's a party all the time. You know, it was serious too. You know, we were serious. We were there. We wanted to write, we wanted to record. Of course we did that all the time, but you know, we all felt safe there. And, um, and he always made us feel not like he was bigger than anybody else. Never that. And we knew the kind of magnitude that man is, was, you know, um, it, you know, it, it was just, it was insane. And I wish I could have that feeling of him, you know, being around on stage, playing, we're rehearsing, you know, eight or nine, 10 hours a day. <laughs> and it wasn't work. It wasn't work. It was um, fun. I'm going to ask you this. It was fun. It was fun. I, I, and I'm going to ask you this because I saw uh, Prince's last performance in Montreal at the Bell Center. And I'm assuming you must have mm-hmm. been there because it was in the last, uh, it was in that time. Um. There is one thing to be in in the audience and hear when doves cry and hear purple rain and hear the songs. What's it like to get on that other side and be the one that's, you know, showing it to the audience, that that's getting it out there and and living it every day? Because th- those songs, they, they sort of rise above, right? They're not just a pop song. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. Um, lyrically, he was somewhere else. I mean, if you... If, um, A, to answer your question, being on stage with him and hearing it, sometimes I'd have to be like, check myself and stay on my steps and stay on my songs <laughs> because we get all can get caught in the days of just, just in a daze watching him, you know, like, oh my God, like 
first off, the vibe and the energy that you're catching from him off stage is insane. The synergy of it is, it's the vibration of it is crazy. Um, and then also sometimes if you strip away the music and you listen to him lyrically, right. Or just him piano and his voice lyrically, it's just something else, you know, he's code, he's language, he's another language, he's an, he's another divine entity. And so it's just, I'm thankful for it, you know, and I think anybody who's been to a show or has caught his energy, it stays with you. Clearly it stays with you. It stays with you. Right. Um, I mean, that's how and, that, I and that's the key I mean, word. It's a different energy. It, you know, being in the audience, you get that energy of the live show and so on. But being yeah. uh, being the musician, it, it's not the same energy. You know, it's it's a very different thing. Um, boy, that yeah. must it just yeah, it, it's it, a different vibration, f- for real. You know, it's a, if and it's a different you know language too. Um, if that's if you can understand what I'm saying, it's just a, a different way. Um, speaking without having to talk and move, move your mouth and looking and catching, catching eye looks or catching a vibe or watching his hands on the guitar or even on the piano. It's a trip. Like he, he plays with his body, his whole body, you know? So, so oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, he, listen, uh, he, he was making love to the songs. Let's put it that yeah. way. Yeah. You know, yeah. uh, yeah, you were yeah. part of Lotus Flower as well. Were you not? Yeah. Yes. Mm-hmm. Triple Absolutely. album. I mean, if yeah, you if you look yeah. at any band from the '80s, whether it's Hart or Billy Idol or or, or Kiss or anybody mm-hmm. who was running, and you say Triple Album, you go, yeah, uh huh. But Prince <laughs> does it, right? Right, you do. And Prince does it, you go, yeah. oh yeah, okay, give yeah. us four, give us four, give us five. Um, right, yeah, yeah. What, what was that yeah. like when when you sat down as a band and said, hey, we're going to make not a single album, not a double album, but a triple album? Do you just sort of do your eyes just bug out and you go, oh, all right. Let's give this I a mean, shot. I, I mean, no. I mean, I, to be honest with you, because it was, again, it was just, man, okay, what, what do you want to make today? What music are you doing today? It wasn't up to us. You know, um, it was what he felt like he wanted to do. And I feel like we were all family and, and soldiers and just kind of like, all right, let's do it. All right. You know, I, you, you live, you got this alto, you got this, you, you know, it's like, yeah, let's get it. You know, it's just. You have to be open to that. You know what I mean? And not everybody's open to that. Not everybody's open to how um, much music and how much time that it takes and how much energy, energy, excuse me, that it takes. Um, But all of us and all my MPG family, we all open to it all, all the time. Yeah, and I think I think that I think that's the important word is to be open because I, I, there are a lot of artists that are very close to the process of, of I have to write a single for Billboard chart and I have to write a single for mm. AOR radio and I have to yep. write a, and it's like well don't close that just let it flow and then yeah. we'll figure out where we stick it you know absolutely but, but yeah anyway. absolutely. I will yep. quickly remind the folks that your new single, Look At Me, is available yes. now. Mantra is out, too. Uh, any more comments on the two songs, or shall we just tell the folks, get it anywhere? It's digitally available, <laughs> iTunes, all digital retailers. But go ahead. Yes, it's available on all digital platforms. Look At Me was something that I wanted to do. I wanted to have fun with it so everybody's not so much in their head and just kind of take a minute to just celebrate themselves for a second. You know what I mean? You deserve to be celebrated, so look at you. Yes, girl get it so <laughs> i wanted to have fun with that and um i'm i'm really excited about 2020 there's a lot going on it's just so much going on a tour coming up and um working with um Tietro Zanzani in chicago and the album it's just a lot and i'm really excited so i really appreciate excuse me appreciate your support and people who are going to download this music so have fun with it <laughs> yeah, and 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 I appreciate artists like you because they, they for, for for so long they've been saying oh music is dead rock is dead this is dead it's like oh nah. stop it music will nah. never die exactly 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 yep yep and there we go and, and as we say in Montreal uh, merci beaucoup thank you so much Liv an absolute pleasure uh, merci merci beaucoup we will see you soon up here I hope absolutely me too cheers now bye bye take care. Bye-bye. This has been Rock Talk with Mitch LaFond. For more exclusive content and interviews, subscribe on iHeartRadio, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, on YouTube, and many more. Follow Mitch on all the socials, especially Twitter, at Mitch LaFond, and on Instagram, at Mitch underscore LaFond.
Get your Mitch merch now at loudtracks.com slash Mitch.